Hey founders, you may have noticed that when the economy gets rocky, it gets harder to do fundraising. The irony is that many of the greatest companies have been founded during downturns. So today I want to talk about the specifics of how the downturn affects fundraising and ways to position yourself for maximum success during these times. Welcome to Feel the Boot, the science of startups. I'm your host, Lance Cottrell, and I'm here to help you navigate the nearly vertical learning curve you're going to encounter as you start your business. I know what it's like, I've been there myself, and I have helped countless other founders along their journeys. Let's start with a bottom line up front. Fundraising takes longer, valuations are lower, investors are focused on revenue, and they want to see you come out of the fundraising round with a longer runway than they did before. So when the market in general is doing poorly, investors tend to get conservative and hesitant about making new investments. This is particularly true of angels who are going to be dominating your pre-seed and seed rounds. And that's because they're taking money directly out of their investments, out of their retirement account, and they're watching the balance in that re retirement account drop day by day, week by week, much less than it was a year ago when they were making investments. And it's very difficult psychologically to pull more money out of that at the bottom to stick into a high risk investment. Now, venture capital also becomes somewhat more risk averse, but they have less of an issue because they are spending other people's money, money that's already been committed. So they've raised their fund, they have the money on hand, they can actually take advantage of some of the things that happen in a downturn, but they still tend to be a bit more careful than they were before and perhaps focus more on follow on investments to the people they've already invested in rather than initiating new high risk investments. The next reality is you need to anticipate lower valuations. This is for a couple of reasons. When the economy is really hot, valuations get pretty ridiculous. Things are frothy, there's a ton of money chasing a handful of good deals, and the valuations are quite frankly unrealistic and probably mean those deals are not gonna return a great deal of money to the investors in most cases. Whereas when the economy starts getting worse, it's not necessarily that the valuations plummet below what's realistic, although that may happen in some cases, mostly it's just that they return to earth. But if you learn to set your expectations for what a reasonable valuation was during the boom times, that can be a little hard to stomach. And of course, valuations are lower because with many people pulling back, there's less investors chasing the same number of roughly of deals. And so the competition is less, that also leads to the valuations falling a little bit. When you're building your business plan and putting that into your deck, try to get a much longer runway. Whereas previously, it might have been reasonable to shoot for something like 18 months. Now, people would much rather see you have a runway that will take you uh, 24 to 36 months when you raise this round, ideally without necessarily raising a bigger round. It means being a little more conservative with your growth rate, scaling back the spend that you were planning, but they want to see you have that longer runway because they anticipate the economy may stay bad for a while. And so raising that next round will take potentially much longer than expected. Uh, and it may be difficult to do it all. So having that runway potentially allows you to be raising that next round after the economy is recovered and things are looking good and the valuations are coming back up. So an investor, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see you raising into good times in your next round, not into still difficult choppy waters. Make sure that you have a path to get break even. So if things don't go great, you can get to default alive. You probably don't need to start with that after you raise this round of funding, but watch really closely as that runway begins to shrink. If the economy is still in a tough spot, if fundraising looks like it's gonna be difficult, make sure that you've created a scenario where you can drive towards default alive sustainability so that you can survive until the fundraising environment recovers. Hopefully you won't need that. Hopefully the company will be growing strongly as you take advantage of what's going on at the time, but you wanna make sure that if things don't break your way, it means you're dead. 
Along with that focus on profitability is a need to focus more in your pitch decks on revenue. When things are tough, eyeballs are no longer worth what they used to be, and investors are gonna to wanna to see your customers actually ponying up cash, not just attention. And that's because that is king in this time, but it also gives you more optionality in how you run the business. If you're generating money, you have a chance of reducing your burn rate or going for break even. Whereas if you're purely going for eyeballs in the early years, you don't really have any options for going into a bootstrap mode. In downturns, investors tend to prioritize investing in companies that are capital efficient. If you need a ton of money to be successful, that's a big negative, right? We prefer it if you can get there leanly. So if your initial business model required a big spend, see if there's ways that you can modify it to avoid that. If you're doing manufacturing, can you go to a contact contract manufacturer rather than building an entire factory? Now the unit economics might be better if you built the factory, but if you're gonna need $20 million just to put up the building to produce unit one, when things are bad, that's really scary because I doubt you're gonna have follow on funding to be able to build that. So look hard at all of the details in your model to see if you can reduce the amount of money you're gonna need beyond the current investment. Right, because if you need to do another huge raise and valuations are bad, the current investors are gonna get hugely diluted. So they probably won't even make that initial investment for fear of what happens in the next round. The more capital efficient you can be, the less risk there is for those investors. If you can, try to get to or near Default Alive right now, even before you raise the next round, because it does give you optionality. You never want to be raising money and negotiating over a barrel where you desperately need that money or you're in trouble. You're in a much better place if raising cash right now is a choice, not a necessity. And that gives you all the flexibility in the world. And as an example with Anonymizer, and I talked about this in the last episode, we had a big angel investment and an acquisition offer on the table. Both of those fell through and we were able to survive because we could cut everything and get into that bootstrap mode uh, and extend our runway to infinity because it was a long time before any more money was on the horizon. Because we could do that, we were able to survive until we achieved the successful product market fit and could grow our way out. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting. And if you did, please do the usual, like, subscribe, ring that bell. It makes sure you see more content like this and it makes a huge difference to the channel. I take it as a personal favor and really appreciate it. I encourage you to network with other founders. I've talked about this before, the importance of having an, a group of other people that you can be honest and truthful with and bounce ideas off, uh, get mutual referrals and recommendations. I set up the Feel the Boot Founders Alliance. There'll be a link down in the description. There you'll find a bunch of other people who are along the same path and like this kind of content as well. If you've got personal questions for me, come, to the, uh, come over to feeltheboot.com and subscribe to our newsletter. Boot prints. Uh, in every episode, I include a link to get one-on-one -on -one office hours with me. I love talking to founders. It inspires most of these episodes. And if you want Feel the Boot on the go, you can get Feel the Boot as a podcast. Same content as all of these videos, just all audio on all of the major podcast aggregators. Until next time, ciao.